This is what he said. <laughs> that elephant pee, you can't get that off your hands for days. <laughs> I said, you're joking. He said, no matter what you wash your hands in, he said, it's not going to come out. That won't come out. So I got in the car. I wasn't going to say Phil. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I got in the car. I'd washed my hands, got in the car, and uh, switched the heater on, and, uh, and was driving down the road. And as the heat was blowing onto my hands, so it, I relived the entire experience. <laughs> I relived that experience for about three days. Now, the one thing that, uh, that a lot of people will remember you for, certainly I remember you for, was doing the, the, the links for the children's programmes in the afternoon. What a lot of people might not know is that you also did all the technical side as well. Yeah, it was a, it was a fully operational continuity desk. So all the faders and all the buttons, everything did something. And, uh, because when we weren't in the broom cupboard, um, I used to switch the camera off at the, at the end of our session. And, uh, and the spinning world used to be where the camera was, right. on the button. And, um, and then I'd go home, and it always used to make me laugh, because we'd leave our studio with, uh, with cuddly toys hanging <laughs> off the ceiling, and there'd be pictures along the back. And I knew that evening, as the continuity announcer said, no one, Busy one, no panorama, uh, <laughs> that he had all this stuff around him, our, our stuff. And they always used, they said to me, right from day one, because uh, we were upstarts and there was no script that we'd, we'd wander into presentation, you know, the, the most tightly run department in the whole of the BBC, you know, that everything has to be slick and on time and the whole thing. And I said, um, when you go uh, in there, don't touch anything, will you? <laughs> that you don't need to touch. So I said, no, of course. I said, don't ever, ever touch the spinning world. Don't touch the, the clock. Don't ever touch the clock. They said, no, no, no. It's because you've got nothing to do with you. That's adult television. It's not children. <laughs> So I said, okay, all right, well, I, no, I understand. I said, so don't mess. I said, no, 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 that's fine, I won't mess. And one day, I was, um, I could, I could, you could, you could cut through pictures, mix your own pictures and things. And um, I, uh, I got lost in the desk. And I just pressed one button, and up came the spinning world. I transmitted it in children's. And you could hear people next door going, <gasps> <laughs> He's pressed the button! And that was it. I wandered down the desk trying to find, and I eventually lost my sound, trying to find, and I cut up pictures of every, everything that I wasn't supposed to touch, I transmitted. Well, I think we should see this nightmare. Here he comes. On Monday, hang on a minute, let me do it again, shall I? Don't forget, on BBC Two, this weekend, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> watch this, watch this. Here we go. <laughs> And after that was I'd only been there for about six weeks and there was a I could hear as 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 I went I waved goodbye total silence and waved goodbye into the weekend and I put my hand up to my face and I thought I see I'm gonna get sacked and I could hear <laughs> coming up the corridor Here he comes. assistant head of presentation four or five people but it was like I was about to be arrested and they <laughs> burst in through the door and said would you like to come with us please God, my God, it's all over. And they dragged me out and walked me. I was mar frog marched downstairs to the, uh, to the head of presentation, a guy called Malcolm. And thank God, as I walked in through the door, and they, these people were ready to sack me, and as I walked in through the door, he burst out laughing. He said, dear boy, he said, I just marvellous. He said, it's the worst thing we've ever transmitted. <laughs> Thankfully, he laughed. Ladies and gentlemen, please say thank you to the man who never seems to get any older, Mr. <laughs> Philip Schofield. Come on. Thank you. But the nightmares aren't over yet. There's still loads more to come on this screen of screams.
about the TV nightmares. Now, in many cases, if you're a TV presenter, red light means danger. Yet there's something about the cue light on top of the camera that makes you lose all sense of language and decency. <laughs> language and decency. Which is why this selection of clips will leave you saying, I can't believe they said that on TV. The thing with Eamon and I is, once we start talking, we're a bit like, I don't know if you remember Les Dawson and Roy Barraclough when they used to sort of talk over the fence. The thing is with the two of us, once we start off, then we're, you know, like this, or the, and, and we don't know when to stop, despite the fact producers are screaming in our ears saying, shut up, get on with it, you're a minute over. If we're in something, there's no stopping us, I'm afraid. What they don't tell you, of course, is that they jam so many cars in, you mm. can't get out for 90 minutes after the match. And the multi-story ones are even worse, and there's urine in the lifts and all Not sorts urine. of things. Not yes. urine. A whole lot. <laughs> Eamon and I were talking about public transport, then it got onto the state of um, public car parks, and then I said I'd been in one just the previous day, actually, in the lift, and how the lifts always smell in public car parks. And then I thought, shall I say what I actually saw in there? I won't tell you what I saw in my lift in that multi-story car park. Not the just day. urine. <laughs> you can always, you can, no, you can, was the smell different? Bear in mind I'm potty training my little son at the moment. So poo features quite heavily <laughs> in my day, most days. And, that, and I've always said to him, no, you mustn't do it on the floor, you mustn't do it on the floor. He went into this car park, they were surrounded by, as I very appropriately put it on GMTV, piles of number two, human number two. <laughs> it was just disgusting. And I did think before actually saying it, and then I thought, oh, I'm going to say it anyway now. And you know it what?